reminder to our viewers there that the game, it is 38 minutes of thinking time. It's 10, ten ends of play. And a... Oh, looks like there's a little bit of a situation there. Okay, never mind. There looked looked like some. It sounds like somebody was missing a, a a gripper, but it was found. So yeah, it's ten ends, thirty-eight minutes of thinking time, and if we're tied at the completion of that, we would play an extra end to decide. <laughs> the victor of that matchup. So as we see a series of hits still, I mean, the blue of team Colleen Jones currently sitting just behind the T line, eight foot. So opportunity here for Team Jones to split the house and get a, a bit of a multiple on, and that's a, a big factor in this matchup. Coulter is signaling that the weight is looking up on this one. Comes to rest, just biting the eight foot, sitting one two. So on the third stones here, we see. see I can know we're we're not on third stones. My apologies. We're, we're still at second. So that that is Jill Alco Holland. Uh, of Team Matatal get gets the hit and sits right there at the edge of of the twelve. Of course, a big opportunity for the winner of this tournament as they'll head off to the National Scotties Tournament of Hearts taking place in a few weeks, Fe February 15th to the 23rd at Mosaic Place in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And that's going to be an exciting opportunity for whoever wins this event. Joining Chelsea Carey and the big field of champions here. Sweepers working on this one, trying to hold the line. They will. How far will it roll? It will roll out the, the back and out of play. So opportunity to capitalize on, on that and maybe blank the end. Goes back to Team Matatal. As we see, Mark Cutcliffe third four. The Matatal rink coming out of the hack there. Of course, as we have this one game here in play on Sheet D, we will remind you that, that we have th three other games in play throughout the Dartmouth Curling Club on the four sheets that are, are set up during this tournament. And we'll try to keep you up to date w with those a as we roll through this afternoon's action. Okay, so as you may have seen there, I, uh, the, I totally forgot the, uh, that this is how Team Jones norm normally sets up their, their team. Uh, Colleen, uh, though famous for, for being the last stone thrower for her team, uh, it does play third for the... I play the third stones for the Jones rink, and the fourth stone 
is thrown by her longtime vice, Kim Kelly. Okay, a little bit of confusion there on the other sheets there, so my apologies for a little bit of the silence. Sounds like, I feel like there's a few rocks that, that got jumbled up there between sheets B and C, but we're back to this one here. Kim Kelly gets the, the hit, sticks right there. So it looks like it's coming down to a pretty good possibility at a blank end here as we jump in here with the first skip stone from Colleen Pinckney, the former world senior champion, joining this Mary Matisall rink for the playdowns here at the Dartmouth Curling Club. Well, their skip Mary Matatal coaches Team Taylor Stevens at the New Holland Canadian Junior Championship in BC. Sweepers working on that. There, Al Alco Holland and Sonia gets the hit six right there. Well done. A reminder, if you are in the, the Dartmouth area and uh, you want to come watch some awesome curling, we will have action here at the Dartmouth Curling Club on Canal Street right through to Sunday's final. Uh, uh, games during the round robin at 9 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. And, of course, playoffs on Saturday and then the championship finals on Sunday. Hello. Kim Kelly here with, with her final stone without the last rock, looking for to hit, rolls over to the side a little bit, full 12. <coughs> Great result there from Kim to be able to, to just roll that perfectly. Final stone here for Colleen Pinckney. And once this end is complete, we'll give you a full rundown on uh, all the teams that are are playing during this draw and the big matchups because there's a, a few pretty good ones here during this draw of play. Sweeper's working on this one here. Alco Holland, Sonia joins her. Looking to try to blank, we'll hit solid, so it will be a single point for Team Matatal to open up their accounts on a Tuesday afternoon. And Colleen Jones will have the last rock in end number two, playing the Blue Stones. So while we wait for the, this end to start, we will let you know the full lineups for uh, the draw draw today. Like this afternoon, it is a team Mary McKetton Driscoll on sheet B playing against Marianne Arsenault, the former provincial champion and actually a longtime teammate of, of Colleen and Kim. And some of you may have seen the TSN story a, just a, a little while ago that a, their legendary world championship rank a, of Jones, Kelly, Arsenault, and Delahunt joining back up together for the provincial senior championship. So that will be an exciting thing to see that team back together. On Sheet C, in our other feature game with Jim Russell and 
Penny LaRock. It is uh, Team Tanya Hilliard versus Team Julie McAvoy. And in a matchup that always seems to be a, a, a popular one on Sheet E, uh, it is Team Teresa Breen versus Team Jill Brothers. Jill Brothers, of course, multi-time champion and has won this event many times before. So the team's exchanging hits once again there. A little bit, a little bit of a, a miss there makes it possible for Team Matatal to protect that stone that they have in, in the house. Maybe a force Team Jones to a, a big shot coming up later in this end. Looks a little bit heavy to me, so they're probably going to want to wait for it to curl a little bit, try to get it so that it doesn't set up a double, and looks like it has. <laughs> Yet they're definitely looking at, at, at that, and the Coulter is a long time second the, on many high level teams there is pretty good at making those, those big, big weight takeouts. A little bit down from what I th thought she was probably going to throw. So it gets the hit, rolls over to the side, so Shotstone will belong still to the Manitow rink. Sitting at the top of the four. So, as we see this stone here from Alco Holland, we'll give you an up update on all the, the games there as uh, the first end's now complete. Uh, as it will be a blank end in the McCutt and Driscoll and Arsenault game on B. In our other feature game with, with Jim Russell and Penny LaRock, it is a 1-0 lead for Tanya Hilliard over Julie McAvoy. And on sheet E, uh, it, it is Teresa Breen that picks up a single in the first end against Jill Brothers. So a reminder there that if you uh, want to keep in touch with all the r results, uh, right through the Sunday's final, you can uh, check out the Nova Scotia Curling Association website. That is nscurl.com. Sweepers column wait, waits up on, on this one here. Sonia trying to, to work it as best she can. Will get the hit stick right there. Well done. So here we see Team Colleen Jones second, Sheena Moore. First year for her with this Colleen Jones rink. After for many years she was curling with a, the Julie McAvoy rink, so great experience for her jumping over to curl with the longtime veteran of, of the sport in Nova Scotia and multi-time national champion. So third stone's here, Cutcliffe l looking to take out the stone there at the edge of the 12, just biting. Gets the hit, rolls over, how far will it roll there? Kelly trying to sweep it. Will come to rest at the back of the 12. Yeah. 
So Colleen just uh, asking Kim to uh, switch the turn of which she was going to be throwing. Throwing outside in, so that will be her uh, the in turn there on this one. Sweeper's working on it on this more and Coulter. Gets a hit, rolls out, and cl clear house there for Cutcliffe going into her second stone. Yeah, definitely a few interesting connections throughout the, the, the two tournaments, the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts and the Deloitte Tankard. They, one of the ones to note actually is on they, this rink there, Julia Coulter. They, for some of you who may have been tuning in with me they, earlier today, there they, as it, I was commentating on the Stuart Thompson versus Andrew Gibson matchup. They, it happens there that I believe Julia's husband Travis is on that roster there as the lead for. Team Thompson, the defending champions out of the Dartmouth Curling Club. Sweeper's working on, on this one here for Colleen Jones there. Moore and Coulter get the hit, roll over to the edge of the eight. So far, a, a pretty defensive style game compared to what we saw this morning. This morning, there were a lot of high offense style play from all four ranks. Play all four sheets. My apologies. Skip stones here. Colleen Pinkney skipping for Team Matatal. Looking for the out turn hit. Sweeper's working on this. Sonia and Alco Holland working on it. Gotta go there. We'll get the hit. Rolls out of play. So, it looks like Colleen calling on her fourth stone thrower, Kim Kelly, to a draw to the, the wings. There, of course, a, the further out you get, it, it always seems there that it, it gets a little bit more tricky to, to judge, so always a good factor in a matchup like, like this to be able to take advantage of that and maybe force something but sweepers are needing to work on this to get it where it needs to be so gotta go skip joins in just enough to get it biting the edge of the eight So as we go through this game, we'll also talk a little bit about the National Scotties coming up in a few weeks. A lot of the teams still yet to be determined, but a few major ma ones already in the field. Sweeper's working on this one here from Pinkney. Gets the hit, rolls out. And clean the house here.
It'll be interesting to, to see. I doubt that they'll take this. They'll probably, yeah, it, it is a throw through there. So it, it will be a blank end here in end number two. So a team Matichal will retain the 1 0 lead, and the last rock will still belong to Team Colleen Jones out of the Mayflower. Yeah, hope you're enjoying this matchup. It is a pretty good one so far here through two ends of play. A reminder if you want to get involved in some of our broadcasts, you can uh, always uh, send me a tweet. I, my Twitter handle is at John Seitman, so that's J-O-H-N-S-I-T-E-M-A-N. Yeah, or you can uh, always, you can pretty much tweet anything there connected to to the, this Deloitte Tankard or Nova Scotia Scotties, and uh, I'll be watching some of the stuff there uh, online. We'd love to hear where people are tuning in from. We know that there are that there are a lot of viewers that tune in from all over over our province, our country, and even in many cases around the world. So we see guards set up there just off center line from Team Matt at all. So lead stones here, Julia Coulter, going to go for the corner guard on. The far side, so now a, a bit more offense compared to what we've seen throughout the early stages of this matchup. But gotta work on it to get it over. Gotta go there, and we'll come up just short. Of course, for some of our viewers who, who may not be f as familiar with the sport of curling as much, I, uh, that stone was taken off because it di did not pass a, what is called the hog line. So in order for a stone to be in play, it has to be past that line. So opportunity now with, with that for Andrea Sonye to get one around their own center guard, maybe put some pressure on. So it looks a little bit heavy here from Coulter, so it will go out the back. Opportunity here for Team Matatal now with the two misses there from the Colleen Jones rink to be able to maybe put in another and really put the pressure on. So, second stone here, Jill Alco Holland. S sweepers working on this one, trying to get it by. They want to get it past the center guard. 
will do so. Comes to rest top 12. So great result there for Team Matatal to protect their stone at the edge of the forefoot. Going to force the crucial peel from Sheena Moore. Sweeper's working on this one there. Coulter, they get the hit. Roll over to the side and we'll sit. Second shot opens up the path toward the stone of Team Mary Matatal. Sweepers working on this one there from Alco Holland. Gets the hit, rolls over to the far side. Will sit a count of one, two. Definitely, I, I have to thank there. I see, see already a tweet here from uh, Team Stuart Thompson, who uh, I was lucky enough to call there earlier today, saying, I uh, gl glad to see you're doing commentary again this year. You are our good luck charm in last year's final. Keep up the great work. It, uh, that was quite a final to call. I called that one it, last year as they delighted the home crowd with a victory over Jamie Murphy in the an extra end, I believe that was. Great game. I still consider it one of the highlight reel the things as a broadcaster uh, of the crowds on the feet. Brooms are up, and Thompson's your champion. So who knows? Maybe magic could happen once again, but a long way to go before. That event is decided as is this. So, Team Jones having a bit of a discussion there. Sheena Moore went down to have a quick discussion with her skip just so that they are absolutely sure as to what they want to do. Sweepers, Dustin, this one there, Kim Kelly trying to get it. We'll get the hit, does not get the second stone there. So rolls out the back and the shot stone will still belong to Mary Matatal. Like the Mary Matatal rank. Third stone's here, Mark Cutcliffe. Yeah, this uh, Matatal rink uh, have been one of the ones there that I, uh, I've been watching a lot on the circuit over the past bunch of years. Lots of veterans of uh, the Scotty circuit. Many of them have been to the National Scotty's Tournament of Hearts before. It's always exciting to see you because, because in an event like this, a lot of people may not always I mean, account for Nova Scotia being one of the strongest provinces in the country, but if, when you look at some of these teams, you have ones that have been really working hard all throughout the year on the World Curling Tour and in regional events crafting their game and that's why they're here competing for the opportunity to wear that famous Scotty's heart on their sleeve and 
represent Nova Scotia. Sweeper's working on this one here, trying to get get it by for Colleen. Will not. Comes to rest at the top of the 12 shot stones. 1 2 b belonging to the Matatal rink. So opportunity here, because I do think, looking at the the screens that I, I'm seeing, that these, excuse me, the, the stone just outside the house does does look like it could be in. It's very very close. That would be one there that if it were me out there, I'd be putting a six foot me measure on once they are measuring. If that does come into effect. Does get the hit, rolls over a little bit, but still the two stones at the forefoot are w wide open for Colleen Jones on her second of two. So it looks like, as we see there, Colleen Jones just about to throw here, looking for the double. Sweepers working on this one, Sheena Moore. Looking for the, the double, will hit, sticks right there. Looks, appears to me as if Shotstone still belongs to Team Matatal at the back of the forefoot. A little bit of a tough break there for Team Jones, as th that would have been a really good result to get a double and try to get out of this end. It'll be interesting to see the weight that. Colleen Pinkney throws it at this. He just had, had to kind of play. Hmm. I guess if, if I'm looking at that, you're probably looking backline weight, maybe hack weight. Just try to to just get a solid piece of that that blue and be able to to get it past the yellow in behind and set your multiple, put the pressure back on to Colleen Jones. <coughs> oh, tough result there from Pinkney. Slides right by and it may have resulted in, in a change does appear to me, based on the, the set that I'm seeing up there, that it will be the blue of Team Colleen Jones that will be holding the, sh the shot on this end. As we just have their Colleen and Kim having a bit of a discussion before Kim Kelly's first stone here update across the sheets. It is a 1 0 lead for Mary McKetton Driscoll against Marianne Arsenault as the McKetton Driscoll take a single in end number two. It is a blank end in our other feature game on sheet C as Tanya Hilliard will retain a 1 0 lead. McVoy will have the last rock in end number three, and that, that's nearing its completion over there. And on sheet E is a 2-1 lead for a Jill Brothers over Teresa Breen as Brothers takes a deuce in end number two. Now you're up to date on all the action so far through two.
Sweeper's working on this one, trying to, to set something up. I. Hmm. That is a bit of an interesting call there, simply because I wouldn't be surprised to see Colleen Pinkney throw. Just try to get to nose on the top one, and both of the those blue will go, and and it would leave Mary sitting a mul my team Madisel sitting a multiple, and put all the pressure back on to Kim Kelly. Of course, I won't phase. Kim, as a, she is a former Scotty's champion, alongside her, her skipper, one of the greatest curling teams of all time, that team of Jones, Kelly, Arsenault, and Della Hunt. Final stone here for Colleen Pinkney without the last rock. Sweeper's working on this here. Alco Holland trying to hold the line. Gets the hit. Splits him around and will set a count of one, two, three, maybe even four. It's a butt hit. That little one at the top of the 12 that looks close enough there that, again, they're closer to it than... than than I am, so who knows, it could be a country mile. It's going to be a tough shot here. <laughs> Definitely a big moment in this matchup. You're really going to want to if it were me here, you're yeah, you have to just really play a controlled draw weight. Try to get it through the port. It's you have some good sweepers there in Sheena Moore and Julia Coulter. Actually, the interesting fact there on Coulter is that uh, she is a former pro provincial mixed doubles champion there alongside Travis. So mixed doubles, you definitely have some pretty good sweepers there. And she really takes that into the women's game with pride here. Final stone in end number three, Kim Kelly facing at least three, maybe more. Gets the hit. Where will it go? It will roll out. So it will be a steal of two, maybe three. They're not okay. They're they're not moving that. So we're definitely saying it's at. Actually, they are. They did move it. So it will try to give you an update. It's at least three nil, maybe four. I'll let you know once I see it on the scoreboard. And it will be a big count of three. A steal of three for Mary Matatal, and we'll take a 4 0 lead <laughs> over Colleen Jones. Through three. Of course, 10 in game, anything can happen. But that is a crucial miss early in this matchup. Of course, we saw a little bit of, of that type of style this morning there with Team Stuart Thompson as they were relentless of uh, getting a lead and sticking to it. So as we get started here, Andrea Sonier will open up this end for Team Matatal. So that will mean that, that, again, Team Jones will have the last rock in 
end number four. Of course, always I mean, some pretty tight games between these two <laughs> rings. The only time these two teams have faced off this year, according to the stats I saw online with curlingzone.com, was back at the Scotties qualifier, where it was a 7-6 win for Team Mar Mary Matatal over the Colleen Jones rink. So, definitely goes to show there that, that this game is long from over. Definitely, of course, had to take a moment there as we just wait here for Sonia with her second of two. We've got to send a huge thank you to our many sponsors who, of course, put the help put this event on. I mean, you can't put a, a big event of this size on without the, the support of dedicated sponsors, and this event ha has tight some great support in our title sponsors Deloitte and Scotty's and of course I have to send a huge thank you to the legion of volunteers for this tournament from the Dartmouth Curling Club the host club led by Lynn Burgess in her third term as chair of this championship it takes a lot to put on an event like this, and we hey, thank the members for giving up their playing time there over the week as we showcase some of the best men's and women's curling in Nova Scotia. So into this end here we see Team Jones Coming to rest at the top of the 8-foot shot stone still belongs to Team Matatal. You're going to see Alco Holland here. Looks like, based on what I just saw there from, from Pinkney, looking to draw down to the stone at the top of the 8 but looks like they're just going to have a quick discussion on on that. It's one of those tough scenarios there because you really want to try to get a multiple point and if at all possible. <laughs> if you're calling Jones, but of course here you could almost cruise a little bit if you're Team Matatal and try to maybe force a steal. Okay, going for the uh, what I would call a, a crowd pleaser of a shot there. And they've switched the call. Looks like it's going to be a run back. Always an exciting one for the fans there. Alco Holland. Sonia and Cutcliffe working on it here. Cutcliffe trying to get it over. Will it curl enough? Gets to the nose. Will it get jam? And it will, will re remove a few stones from play. Shotstone will still belong to Team Colleen Jones at the side of the forefoot. Don't forget as well, we do have one more draw today. As this evening, the the men will be back. Excuse me, back on as it will be on our 
other feature game on sheet C. Just one second. I, I will tell you. Just give me one second here. Oh, yeah. So Team Jones game one to the top, the eight behind co cover. So you're going to see Alco Holland called to play a hit and roll behind the guard. So sweeper's not not touching this one until just literally the second I I, I said that. Sonia trying to work on this one. Will get the hit sticks right there. Shot stone. Great results. A great work there from the Matatel ring to hold that. So when it comes to the two broadcasts tonight, when we come to you at 7 p.m. Atlantic time. On sheet C, we will have the Mary Sue Radford and Joe Baker will be bringing you the action from the Brent McDougal versus Chad Stevens game. So that's two longtime rivals on the Nova Scotia Provincial Curling Circuit. And then on sheet D, it will be a bit of a solo show there as uh, Kaylee McLean there will be coming to you here on sheet D bringing you the coverage from Andrew Gibson versus Jamie Murphy Sweeper's working on this one here from Cutcliffe Trying to hold the line, and get past the the up the front stone. Will get the hit rolls over to the side. Will sit second shot. So on the third stones here, the skip for Team Jones. They're Colleen Jones throwing the third stones for her rank. Down by four, you really need some something to go your way the next few ends, uh, or it could be. Uh, a little bit of trouble for the multi-time Canadian champion. Sweeper's working on this one. Got to go. Come on there. We'll come up light. Rex on one of the front guards. So definitely, when, uh, today's a big day here when it comes to a lot of the start of the round robin. Of course, unlike uh, what some people may be familiar with with the Nova Scotia circuit, uh, there were, at least back when I started curling, uh, the provincial men's and women's championships were a triple knockout event with, with a page playoff and, and final and uh, now we're down the way that it goes now is uh, a, the eight teams play in a seven game round robin everybody plays everybody and then we have potential for tiebreakers and then sem semifinals and finals So second stone here from Colleen Jones. Sitting shot stones and lo looking to manufacture a multiple you 
probably in this instance you really want to get at least two or three back to ca cause some more opportunities for your team going into the late stages of this So it gets the, the draw around, sits what appears to be, to me I'm, I'm thinking it looks second shot, so that's a good, a good thing there for the Colleen Jones rink, currently down by four. So now it looks like you're going to see a bit of usage of that front guard. <laughs> oh, and uh, as we see there, Colleen Pinkney head to the the hack for her first there we'll send it as well at this time of year is always a lot of big events in the curling world and one of those events happening right now is actually in Lausanne, Switzerland the Youth Winter Olympic Games and it will be a Maritimer that will be playing for a medal as a Team Canada's Nathan Young from St. John, correction, from Newfoundland. I, I think he's from St. John's, from what I remember hearing. And, and his partner in the mixed doubles, Laura Nagy of Hungary, will be playing for a medal. They just beat Japan and France to move on to the semifinals there at the Youth Winter Olympic Games. Of course, Young following in the footsteps of his uh, of a prob probable favorite curler from Newfoundland, some some player named Brad Gushu. But of course, Young looking to make his own legacy there. Kim Kelly with her first of two. Looking to try to get a few back. Sweeper's working on this one here more, and Coulter trying to get it every inch that they can. Will come to rest just off center line, so it appears to be one, two. Both belonging to Colleen Jones. So once we get through this end, going into the fifth end break, we'll also give you a little bit of an idea of who some of these teams could be facing when they head off to the National Scotties. There are a few spots already determined and a few up for grabs this weekend. Final stone here for Colleen Pinkney without the last rock. Sweeper's waiting on this one, trying to get by. How far will they go? They will get the hit rolls out. So it appears to, to be Shotstone belonging to Team Jones.
I think the big question here is just simply what what path you're you're trying to go, because really it's n not much of a question there as to whether. Okay, there, Colleen, changing a little bit of the path, trying to go with the wider line. There, just draw open. Better not to risk the, the, anything jamming on the three guards at the, the top. Final stone here, and number four, Kim Kelly, four stone thrower for Team Colleen Jones. Facing a deficit of four, but looks like she could have a chance to get two back. Looks good to me. Yep, we'll come to rest at the back of the forefoot, so it will be a deuce for Colleen Jones to take a four to two lead. Sorry, correction, four to two deficit into the fifth end, and it will be. Team Matatal skipped by Colleen Pinkney that will have the last rock in end number five playing the Yellow Stones. So yeah, after this end, we'll have about a five minute break as they it will do a bit of ice maintenance, but stay with us. We'll have c coverage leading right through to a result in this game. Still a little while yet there, as we'll have one more end to go before that break. They're starting off for Team Jones. We see Julia Coulter. Sets up the center guard there, so I mean, you'll automatically see Sonia called on to draw around. So it doesn't get around that, so a little bit of an opportunity here for Team Jones if they're able to rest one around. Sweeper's working on this one here from Coulter. Kelly and Moore trying to get it around. Will it get by? It will. How far is it going to go? Will go to rest back of the f forefoot. So as we, as we mentioned there, it will be interesting to see that the, the Scotty's Term of Hearts Nationals coming up middle, middle of February, and it will be coming to you from Mosaic Place in Moose Jaw. A few teams already determined as it will be Chelsea Carey and her team out of the Glencoe in Alberta that will be coming back as defending champions as we see that stone from Sonia Rex on the guard so opportunity for Team Jones to try to get one in, in around behind cover excuse me there I, Newfoundland and Labrador it will be 
Erica Curtis out of the St. John's Curling Club. They'll be headed off to the Scotties. Prince Edward Island, it will be Suzanne Burt, the former runner-up in the Scotties, who will be headed to the National Championship out of the, the Montague Curling Club. A little bit of a Nova Scotia connection there as her third is Marie Christensen who uh, played for a few years uh, here in, well she was originally from Nova Scotia then moved to PEI then moved back to no Nova Scotia and back to PEI again. And then the three territories determined already as uh, Haley Burney will represent the Yukon out of the White Horse Curling Club. Lori Eddy out of the Akawa Curling Club representing Nunavut and of course the superstar out of the Northwest Territories the Carrie Galusha Sweepers working on that one there Sonia try to get it will get to the stone at the side just outside the house there. Of course, it's a, a pretty exciting thing to see there. Carrie Galusha back at the Scotties representing the Northwest Territories for the 17th time there. And of course, uh, she has a few pretty famous family members there along, and that will be probably also up at the the top level there along with her, at, at, but at the Tim Hortons Briar as the, her brothers, Kevin and Jamie Cooey, will most likely have a good chance to, to be there. Of course, Cooey already there at the Tim Hortons Briar as defending champions. Highly likely, though, you'll see Jamie representing the Northwest Territories at the Tim Hortons Briar. Alco Holland here as we get back to this game. Gets a hit, rolls to the side and out. Good opportunity here for Team Jones to be able to try to manufacture multiple points. And here I'm kind of surprised that... They're not trying to do protect a little bit more. But again, that's just me. Colleen Jones here. Like in the in instance here, I mean, there are a few opportunities to get around that. It's a question is how far is it going to curl? They haven't really played the side on a draw enough, so I, I do see why they'd be going for the hit first. Third stones here. Mark Cutcliffe. Gets the hit. Will move a few stones around there. Will open up a bit of the path to the button. <laughs> 
So Colleen Jones here, her second of two. So Cutcliffe, looking at some of the paths there, it looks like they may try to clear up a bit of the the guards up at the front before. Dealing with, with the in, inside the house during Pinkney's two stones. Sweeper's work, not having to work on this one. It's got on its own. Just a little bit of a movement there. Will open up the path. So sitting 1-2 is Team Colleen Jones out of the Mayflower. <laughs> so looking to probably, yeah, they're looking to protect that stone like the two stones at the, in the back of the four foot and back the eight. So you'll see a, a nice guard just over the center line enough to really completely cover it and put force Team Matatal really to the draw. In an instance like this, if they can force Team Matatal to take one, and then Team Jones is able to take a deuce in end number six. It would really cause a complete change in this matchup and really put some pressure on, but it looks like completely going against what I thought it was, they were doing. That they, they put one right in top of the four foot, so one, one, two, three is the count. So it's lined up pretty nicely there, so that you can pro you'll probably see a little bit of weight here from Colleen Pinkney. You should be able to remove at least two of these. The question is where the it's almost like a sandwich there that you could, would get the, the the top and the bottom ones there. The question is where will the middle one go? If you hit it hard enough, I suspect it will go. Sweeper's not even having to touch this one there. Alco Holland jumping in. We'll get the hit. It goes right by. So it holding two Team Jones. So they're going to uh, they jump right back into it and try to probably put another one and then put the pressure all on to... to my apologies to Colleen Pinkney going into her final stone and she'll have to face at least two, maybe three. Final stone four. 
Kim Kelly without the last rock. As that one comes down, it looks like it's gonna. They're gonna be cu coming in again just enough to be sitting a count of three and force Colleen Pinkney to the draw. So uh, uh, as Colleen heads down, we'll quickly uh, uh, get you up to date. Arsenault with a steal of one in end number four on sheet B. So she'll take a three to one lead over Mary McCutt and Driscoll. In our other feature game with Jim Russell and Penny LaRock, it is a four nil lead in favor of Tanya Hilliard over Julie McAvoy. And on sheet E, it is a single point end for Jill Brothers to have the game tied between her and Teresa Breen. Final stone here in end number five, just going into the, the, the break. Sweeper's working on this here. Alco Holland and Sonia got to go there, try to get it by. Looks light to me. But, yeah, it will come up short. So it will be a steal of three to take a five to four lead over at Team Matatal going into the fifth end break. Stay tuned, we'll have second half coverage coming up af after this break from draw two of the Nova Scotia Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. You're watching the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts presented by 360 Live, partnered by Bell 5. See you after this break.
In, in what, what many people would have probably thought to, to be a bit of a lopsided scoreline starting. It was a steal of three to take a 4-0 lead, but then Team Jones ripping forward with a two in, in the fourth and a, three, a steal of three in the fifth to take a 5-4 lead through five ends of play, and that's where we come back to you, I'm John Seitman here for a, this game, your sole commentator, bringing you all the action, answering your questions, telling you some facts about the, the teams, and talking some curling, as it's definitely an exciting time in the sport coming up with the... Scotty's Tournament of Hearts and the Tim Hortons Briar coming up. We just had the fifth end break there as the ice making team led by Tracy Froud, the ice maker here at the Dharma Curlin Club, doing some ice maintenance on each of the, the four sheets. And we thank him and his team for the many hours that that's it, they put in, in addition to all the, volunteer, the volunteers here at the Dartmouth Curling Club who do a great job in 
been putting on this event. There are Lynn Burgess and her crew in their, Lynn's in her third time as chair of this event. So in this end, it will be Team Mary Matatal with the last rock playing the Yellow Stones. So we'll, as we reintroduce the game, we'll just give you a quick rundown on who the eight ladies are competing in this afternoon's contest. Team Jones, their lead is Julia Coulter. Their second is Sheena Moore. Their skip throwing the third stones is Colleen Jones. And their fourth is Kim Kelly. And they curl at the Mayflower Curling Club. Of course, Jones and Kelly, the longtime back end of the former world championship rink out of the Mayflower, that will actually be making their return at the Nova Scotia Senior Playdowns coming up. I love the quote there from, I think it was either Colleen or Nancy it, from that world championship rink. There they had the three of them there being Jones, Kelly, and Della Hunt were playing together for a while in the senior ranks. And they were just waiting uh, for the youngest of the bunch there. Marianne Arsenault to jump up into being old enough to play in, in the senior ranks. So it'll be good to see them back together again, looking for their return to a national type title. And then Team Matatal, as we already saw, lead Andrea Sonye. The second that just threw there was Jill Alco Holland. Their third is Mark Cutcliffe, and in a little bit of a change to the lineup from the listing of team, of it being Team Matatal, we have Colleen Pinkney, the former world senior champion, that takes up the skipping duties for the Matatal rink after, of course, Mary Matatal currently up with Team Taylor Stevens at the New Holland Canadian Junior Championship. Currently, Team Stevens running a 3-in-1 record, and we wish them all the best of luck as they look to solidify a good spot in the championship pool. On the third zones here, pretty clean 6 end so far. Lots of exchanging of hits. Sweeper's working on this one here. Alco Holland and Sonia will get the hit we'll get the hit roll over to the side of the eight. We'll also Get you up to date on all the games there. As we see a stone here from Colleen Jones. It is currently a three to two lead for Mary and Arsenault after excuse me, after Mary McKetton Driscoll takes a single in end number five. So Arsenault will have the last rock in end number six. In our other feature game with Jim Russell and Penny LaRock, it is a 4-2 lead for Jul correction for Tanya Hilliard after a deuce in favor of Julie McAvoy in the fifth. And on sheet E, it is a two-point end for Teresa Breen to take a 5-3 lead over Jill Brothers going into the sixth end. <laughs> of course, the Joe Brothers, the defending champion, rink out of the Mayflower Curling Club. Yeah. 
get Joe Brothers, Aaron Carmody, Sarah Murphy, and Jen Bryan, and Coach Taylor Ardeal. They won this event last year in a pretty stunning victory in the final. I was pretty fortunate to call that. Up, but I, I believe that one was alongside Selena Thompson for that. Nice hit and stick there from Kim Kelly. Gets the hit, sticks right there. Reminder, if you want to get in on the conversation about any of the action and maybe even send me your questions or comments, you can always tweet me at John Seitman, that is J-O-H-N-S-I-T-E-M-A-N, or you can always tweet to the Nova Scotia Curling Association page, and I'll yeah, I'm always ch checking everything there, and oh yeah. we'll hopefully, if you have any questions or comments, we'll be able to get them onto the broadcast over the next five ends. And if there's something you need to know, and we'd lo we'd love to be able to help you out. Always great to see. So, such a wide variety of viewers there, whether it be your experienced veterans of the game who have been around the curling clubs for years, or even the ones who are fairly new to the game, and a lot of ones recently with the success of in recent Winter Olympic Games have been often a, turned on to the sport of curling they're through the success of our teams at those games. Big hit and stick there from Pinckney. So the reminder there, when we come to you at 7 p.m. here from the Dartmouth Curling Club, it will be the Deloitte Tankard Round 3, as it will be on Sheet C, Brent McDougall versus Chad Stevens, and on Sheet D will be Andrew Gibson versus Jamie Murphy. Of course, early stages for all of these teams there, as this is a seven game round robin, there everybody plays everybody, and then if we still are not settled by that to our final three, we would have tiebreakers, followed by semifinals and finals on Saturday for the semis and Sunday for the finals. As we look to determine who will be headed off to the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Pinkney looking for the hit to hopefully blank this end. And a little bit of a flash there. So it will be the Another steal, it will be a steal of one, as Colleen Jones will take a six to four lead into the, the seventh end after that steal of one, and it will be a Team Matatal with the last rock in end number seven playing the Yellowstones.
a reminder if you're in in the area and would be want to watch some awesome curling you can come on down to the Dartmouth Curling Club on Canal Street the admission is uh, I don't know exactly how much it is but it's a, a great value to come and watch some exciting curling with some of the top teams in Nova Scotia battling it out for the opportunity to head off to the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts at Mosaic Place in Moose Jaw and then of course the Tim Hortons Briar at the Leon Center in Kingston, Ontario. So corner guard set up there from Matatal after the Jones rinks set one inside the house, their top eight, biting the top four. Of course, they always exciting to see some of these big events they, coming around our way. We recently had the National Scotties after a long absence there. They, as it, it, it was at Center, center 200 a little while back and then they, of course who can forget the fun that we had back in April 2015 as the Tim Hortons Briar rocked Sorry, correction, not the Tim Hortons, but the Ford World Men's Curling Championship he rocked Scotia Bank Center with Nicholas Edeen picking up the world title on home ice. Correction, not on, on, on home ice, on our home ice. But it was a, Pat Simmons and his rink that picked up the bronze medal in a win over, I believe it was Finland. I should know, I was the junior star for Team Canada during that, that championship. So we'll see there. Kelly and Jones having a bit of a discussion on this one. Interesting to see the positioning that, that they'll try to go for. It looks like they may try to protect against the out, out turn draw because I think they're seeing the spacing between the guard and the stone in the house is fairly high, so it, the risks there aren't as much as you think. So Sheena Moore here. Looking to nudge that one a little bit. Will do so. So great result there for Team Jones there as they hold a two shot lead. A little bit of intensity over there in the game between Marianne Arsenault and Mary McKetton Driscoll. I don't know if you are hearing it in the back of, but like, off in the distance it, for you guys at home. Uh, 
So a little bit more open open path here for Team Matatal, but you're going to see an opportunity for Team Jones to kind of shut that one down a little bit more for them. It, it is fairly, fairly high and protected there. Yeah, great to see a, a, a nice sized crowd there here during t today's action and it's only day two as we kicked off yester yesterday afternoon. This is I believe the third year there that the, the Dartmouth Curling Club has hosted this event. Yeah, after three, three or so, three or so years of being over at the Mayflower Curling Club, big shot here from Alco Holland with with weight there. Sonia and Cutcliffe working hard on this one, trying to hold the, the line. How far will they get it? They will get the hit and jam one there. So sitting one two is Team Jones. Yeah, for many years, uh, these two events were held separately. We, but about six years ago, I believe it was, the NSCA made, a, in my view, an, an awesome change there of uh, bringing these events together under one roof and really making this a major showcase event for the sport of curling in Nova Scotia and bringing all these ta amazing talents of the sport together to compete for both titles in one amazing week of curling. Sweeper's working on this one here for Colleen Jones, trying to get it as far as you can there. Girls, where have you got it? We'll come to rest. That could be interesting. Because I do see a, the possibility of a triple there. Yeah, it's it's gonna. It all depends on the weight that you throw on this one there. Because I do think if you get to the inside, I think all three of them go. You just have to throw 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 it really hard on this one. And I don't think we've seen Cutcliffe throwing that type of waste there during this matchup so far. Not to say that she can't, because she's I've seen her throw some real heaters there. Big shot here. Sweeper's trying to hold this here, Alco Holland and Sonya. Pinkney calling on them to go hard. All you got gets the hit. Will move. Only one of them removed. The other one coming to bite the back of the 12. But definitely a little bit less danger than there was before. Second stone here from Colleen Jones, looking to appear like she's probably trying to play around again. <coughs> nice to see, the, I see out in the ice shed with one of our officials uh, is uh, Andrew Paris, the, who was actually one of my former curling coaches, who is uh, now working as, I believe, I think he's the technical director for the Nova Scotia Curling Association. I, I may be wrong on the title, but I know he has been doing a lot of great work there with the association, advancing lots of great initiatives and co coaching and junior development, and really championing, like championing the athletes there that, that go to a lot of the, these events. Thank <laughs> you. 
we thank him and uh, of course all the NSCA crew for what they do of course one of the big things there at these events especially our officials because you see it takes a lot to put on events like like these on the officiating side whether it's from the officials out there measuring and making decisions on the game or the timekeepers up in here on the second floor of the club So holding two, Team Jones going into this first of two there from Kim Kelly, the fourth stone thrower for the Jones rink. Sweeper's dusting it a little bit. They're looking for it. Bit of the guard, try to avoid the potential for a run back. Looks like they'll do that job successfully there. Coming to rest just off the center line. So 1 2 will both belong to Team Colleen Jones. Really putting a lot of pressure onto the world. The former world senior champion Pinkney. I believe I may be wrong, but for years there, Colleen curling out of the Truro Curling Club. I've seen her around during a few of the under 18 events that I attended with, well, as a junior a little while back. Yeah, this could really be interesting to see here. It looks like they're going to be playing out turn on to the yellow guard and then putting the, a bit of a possibility there of a double tap there. All depends on how hard the weight is there. You're at least clearing up some of the front, and that's a major factor in this. Sweeper's working on this one. Alco, Holland, and Sonia got to go. Gets the hit. But will not get it. the shot stone. Will sit second, third, and fourth. Definitely a tough position here for Mary Matichal's rink after they had a really good start and then the, the champion's experience of Jones and Kelly coming up big with some big shots in the big moments. Yeah, it definitely does limit the opportunities there for Matatal. Yeah, it looks like it's... Hmm. Yeah, swept. It looks like it was going a little bit heavy, so the, the, them pushing it 
as far back as they could get it there to avoid a double. Hmm. Yeah, that looks exactly exactly what I would have thought. The, the only way that you can really get access to that is almost by running the blue back into the, the yellow into blue and then hope that the the yellow gets the catcher at the side of the eight foot it's gonna be a tough ask but if anyone is going to be able to, to do something like that this is one of the ones I would bet would be able to do it Colleen Pinkney here final stone Will jam, it will be a steal of two. To take a eight, eight to four lead, Team Jones will lead and we'll have the, the, the first rock there and the last rock will belong to Team Matatal in and number eight. So, just about to get started here with, with end number eight. Eight to four lead in favor of Team Jones over Team Matatal. Four point lead is definitely not insurmountable. Yeah. Like impossible there, especially with the five rock free guard zone rule, making it that you can really solidify some more offense. But you're gonna need to do it now because if you can't get a few back, then it's gonna be a lot to ask, especially again against a skip of the caliber of Colleen Jones. Even with the experience there that that Pinkney has. It's. We saw it this morning there. Right? Even though there was a little comeback from Andrew Gibson, once you get a big lead, especially through seven, it can really make it difficult to get back into a contest. So, as we see here, Julia Coulter, lead for Team team Jones with her second. Update quickly there. We have a tie game there on sheet B with a steal of one in the, the six there in favor of Mary McKetton Driscoll. And looks like she's holding three over there. So that's a, a big one there for the... the the young gun against the former champion team over there. On our other feature game with Jim Russell and Penny LaRock, it is a 5-2 to two lead in favor of Tanya Hilliard as a single in the six. For Hilliard, puts her up 5-2. And in our last remaining game, the defending champions, Team Brothers in Trouble, currently down by three after a steal of one in the six in favor of their opponents, Team Teresa Breen. She was, she was 
So definitely going to be interesting to see there a, what Colleen does there with with the stone there of Team Matatals there. It looks like they're going to play a bit of a run back onto that stone of Team McAvoy. Oh. Well, uh, got almost a double, but not on the stones there that she wanted to get. Second stones here, Jill Alco Holland. If I remember my name is correct, I believe I, I may be wrong. I think she's from the Gloose Cap Cur Curling Club in Kenful. I think I'd be right in that regard. I remember seeing her name around that club at one point. Sweep, sweeper's just dusting that one. Sits. Right at the top of the 12, biting the 8 foot. Sounds like some uh, big shot making over there on uh, She's E. Uh, a few very enth enthusiastic fans there. Cla clapping a good shot there. I believe probably from the Jill Brothers rink, but I may be wrong. It's been great to see so far through these uh, first two games there, just the, the great consistency of, of these surfaces. Like you go from a sheet C and D, the two uh, show, so to speak, the, the TV show uh, rinks, uh, and I can definitely say there that the consistency from one from each rink there from B, C, D, and E looks pretty much the same there and that, that's a great thing to see a nice fast consistent surface that can allow you to make great shots and that all comes down to some great work from Tracy Froud and his crew making this surface the way it is and we thank him for all of his hard work I remember one of the championships uh, that they had here at the Dartmouth Curling Club. I think it was the Scotties. Uh, there was supposed to be a snowstorm there during the week and uh, the Tracy, the dedicated ice maker he is, uh, ended up uh, staying here overnight to ensure there that, that if the power went out, the ice stayed at the highest standard it could be and it definitely shows in the amazing surface that this Dartmouth Curling Club has. So on the third stones here, we see uh, Kim Kelly. Uh, put the broom down for Colleen Jones. As we have a current, it's eight to four in favor of 
Colleen Jones. Gets the draw j just over the, in the center line, so opportunity to play for some contact on the, the two stones in the house. It's going to be tough to, to hold the line, though, but we will see. We'll let you know there. It sounds like, it, I guess there, the team brothers as fans were definitely pretty happy as it was a big count of three in favor of their team over on Sheet E against Teresa Breen to tie up that game at six apiece. And Team Breen will have the last rock in end number eight. So it's definitely a tough position here if you are Mary Matatel's ring there. Because you really have to get at least a, a two here to keep your hopes alive. It's one of those situations where almost similar to the, the matchup this morning. I'd guess probably if you had a single that probably still wouldn't be enough you really have to get at least two and then hope for a steal which we have seen happen in this game a bit more than in the morning game great hit and roll there from Cutcliffe Still doesn't sit in the count, so you'll probably see Colleen ignore that one and call on Kim Kelly to play another one around. There it looks like. Okay, so it looks like they're just going to guard that side up because that side they've been playing it pretty often. So both teams getting a, a pretty good familiarity with, with that side of the sheet. does come to rest a little bit short of their intended result. So opportunity is on. So really need to probably have a bit a bit of movement on this one. You want to get to the inside and then maybe force it a, a double out. But the question is the jam of the one at the side of the 12 foot. Just biting the eight. Big shot here for Colleen Pinkney. With, with the, la the last rock in this end. It hits the guard and rolls out the side. So sitting one, two still will be Team Jones. It's unfortunately t a tough situation for 
the Matatal rink that played so well that first little, little first four en ends there, and then the, the steal of three really was the difference in this matchup. But again, it's not over till it's over. These teams, the reason why they have been able to get here to this play down is being able to fight game after game after game and be able to overcome obstacles, whether it's on in events on the World Curling Tour where two of these teams would have qualified from and then at the provincial qualifier where the remaining teams came out of. So facing two, it will be a draw to a nice chunk of the four foot for Colleen Pinckney, and that, that's what she'll need to do if she wants to keep her hopes alive in this second round of play. This is the only, only game for the women today, as they'll kick off the action tomorrow at 9 a.m. as Mat the Matatal Rink will face off against, Ma against Marianne Arsenault. And then the Colleen Jones rink will face off against Teresa Breen. Final stone here. Sweeper's working on this one. Gets it nice right to the side of the button. So it will be 8-5 to five in favor of Team Colleen Jones. And Team Jones will have the last rock in end number nine. So a little, little bit of discussion, but it looks like we will play on. I think you're going to see the, in many situations there with the, the round robin especially this early in, in the event, you'll see a, a lot of teams play some of these ends which may look by the scoreline almost, so, so to speak, almost meaningless or like that they don't have any effect on the outcome of the game from what, what, what you've seen. They just simply to have the opportunity to be able to get a bit of practice for later in, in the competition and get a bit of a feel for how the ice is going throughout the week. That being said, it is a, a bit of an endurance match there. So Team Matatal setting up a, a pretty high guard. You'll see Julia Coles are coming around. Oh, actually no, she's trying to play the, is she trying to play the tick? No, okay. Yeah, I do speculate there that they they were trying the tick shot, but a little bit wide. That it, it is a very tough shot there unless it, you've really mastered it. Of course, the tick shot it was really made famous in the women's game, especially by a Team Rachel Holman lead Lisa Weagle. My apologies there. Yeah, Lisa Weagle. And 
It actually got to the point where some leads were so good at it there that they actually made it a rule in one of the World Curling Tours Grand Slam Curling events that you actually couldn't use the tech shot because people were so good at it. I may be wrong, but I think they had Team Home and actually ended up making the final, so they proved that they didn't need the tech, they just proved that they can play with anything and do it well. So that pretty clean open house. I suspect you're probably going to see if Team Matatal can't manufacture at least a two or a three. It'll, it'll be highly unlikely that we would see anything but handshakes there. Still a long way to go, though. So Sheena Moore working on this one here. Kelly and Coulter. Just watching it, but no need to even put a brush to it. Pretty clean house, and it will leave a pretty good opportunity for Team Matatal to play a bit of a come around here. So the other rings just about finished their eighth end, so we will try to keep you up to date with those as we finish up with, with them. Weaver's working on this one here. Gets the nose, will sit, shot stone. And I'll definitely say it, the, a lot of the, the, the game really is, is not shown by the score line that you see of eight to four. Correction, eight to five there, I believe. I, I, I thought it was eight five. Yeah, yeah, my apologies, eight, eight to four, yeah. It, just simply in those, those two steals in five and seven were major factors when it came to just this game getting a little bit out of hand still. It, Team Matatal skipped by Colleen Pinkney playing extremely well. Just one, one of those mountains to climb to try to get through the margin that they're down already, especially against a, a team where the back end are two of the greatest women's players to ever play the game. So, looks like they're going to see Sheena Moore, Kim Kelly, and Colleen Jones ha having a bit of a discussion on on that. Just a little bit of positioning of 
Hey, if you're going to roll, where are you going to roll? Yeah, Colleen Jones, they, a few years ago, they had the they, greatest curlers of all time they, panel where TSN they, had a lot of curling experts vote on they, who they considered to be the greatest to ever play this game. And Colleen Jones was one of these ones there where uh, she was actually up as the number three on that list with six Scotties titles, two world titles, and a record 138 Scotties wins in 21 appearances. Absolutely amazing. She's also won the Canadian mix, the Canadian seniors, and the world senior championship. But of course, Definitely a good battle there of, of the two skips, of course. Jones and Colleen Pinckney, both world senior champions in their own right. So it looks like it will be a final on sheet C, our other feature game there, as it appears to be Tanya Hilliard and her team picking up the win over Julie McAvoy. So we'll probably have some of the viewers from, you know, that were tuning into the action on sheet C joining uh, us in a little bit so in a minute I'll just let you I'll reintroduce the matchup for any of our viewers tuning in from that there so a little bit of a sandwiched positioning there uh, as you have one excuse me yellow of team Matatals in between two Blues belonging to Team Jones. So, uh, hello to any of our viewers just tuning in from a uh, sheet C, as you saw a Tanya Hilliard victory over Julie McAvoy. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with the matchup here on sheet D. I, my name is John Seitman. I have been your commentator extraordinaire on this sheet D for it. An excellent matchup between Colleen Jones, the one of the greatest to ever play the game, and and her rink alongside Kim Kelly, Sheena Moore, and Julia Coulter out of the Mayflower playing against the NSCA composite rink of Colleen Pinckney, Mark Cutcliffe, Jill Alco Holland, and Andrea Sonye. So a little bit of an over <coughs> curl behind the guard and that probably leads to some good results there for the Manitow rink. Of course, I mean, for our viewers just tuning in there, I mean, it, don't adjust your head, headsets. That is not Mary Matatal at the other end skipping for team I mean, for that team playing the Yellowstones. I mean, Mary is up uh, in British Columbia currently I mean, as the coach for team Taylor Stevens playing at the New Holland. Canadian Junior Championship. Currently, Team Stevens 3-1, and, one, and uh, Team Graham Weagle 
currently representing on the men's side three wins and two losses. And we wish them all the best of luck as they look toward qualifying for the champ championship pool coming up. So, second of two here from Colleen Jones. Still not a, I, I'm always thrown off any time I, I see a Colleen throwing with a, a the, the brush because you're so used to seeing the, the famous images there from her Scotty's title run of her using the, the stabilizer and Of course, she's had a pretty good run the past few years there, Colleen Jones, including actually jumping up into the mixed circuit where she joined her son, Luke Saunders, and also, I believe it was Peter, Peter Burgess and Lindsay Burgess at the Canadian Mixed Championship. So, so gonna need to see a, a little bit of a upper weight shot here. Try to uh, rejig a, a few of those stones in that comp before. So on to skip stones here. You see Colleen Pinkney. Looking to, to get through the port and, actually no, not through the port. My apologies there. Play a little bit of a run around there. Get gets some movement. So second and third shot will belong to Matatal Rink. Need at least three probably here. So you're going to need to see those other two blue go. But with that position, it is highly possible. A timeout has been called on there on Delta Blue. on our sheet here, so that that will pause the clocks there. So definitely going to be interesting to see here. I, if I'm looking at this situation, you really you really have a position where. Colleen probably sees the fact that those two blue are not as safe as they could be. So you really need to be able to protect it, probably with a draw, like guard just on the center line, I think, if it, if it were there at least, and force a, a little bit of a, a harder shot, probably a run back is a, in the order of business. So, it, yeah. Still two stones left here for Colleen Jones's rink. One stone left for Mary Matatal's rink, and that will 
make for some interesting correction for Colleen Pinkney. My apologies. So I believe, yeah, that we're down to about nine minutes, I believe, for yeah, nine minutes and forty seconds in favor of Colleen Jones, and about four minutes there for the team Mattishall. That should be more than enough to play at this type of an, an end. So big stone here for Kim Kelly. Definitely really need to protect against the potential for a double. Question is, will it curl enough? There, Sweeper's working on it there. Needs to go. Starting to bend down a bit. Will just nudge it on the nose. So opportunity available, if they so choose, to go for the double to sit three. And I'm really, it makes it almost very, very difficult to do much of anything other than maybe try to limit the count. But it's one of those situations here where if there's any anyone that you want throwing it, one of these ones that you would want throwing a stone like this is the former world senior champion Colleen Pinkney. Final stone without the last rock. Colleen Pinkney, sweepers working on it there. Alco Holland and Sonye. Looks good to me here. Gets the hit. Rolls out there and will sit a count of three. So, could, could be a really big turn here. <coughs> Forces a big shot out of Kim Kelly. Facing three here in end number nine. Final stone. Kim Kelly looking for the hit. Try to stick in in the area. Will hit. How far will it roll? And it will be a steal of two. And and definitely quite a, a turn of events there as it will be an 8-7 to seven lead for Colleen Jones over Team Matatal through nine ends, and it will be Colleen Jones that will have the last rock in the 10th end of play, playing the Blue Stones. Updates quickly as we continue along. It was a steal of one in end number eight in favor of Mary McKetton Driscoll as it a 6-3 lead over there over Marianne Arsenault yeah, 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 yeah. through eight ends of play and on a sheet E it is a, a big count of two in the eighth end for Teresa Breen 
as she hits the eight to six lead over Jill Brothers, the defending champion, through eight ends of play. The hammer in end number nine will belong to the defending champions out of the Mayflower Curling Club. So as we see there, Anya with her first, starting off this final end. Needing a steal to, to take out the win. Or at least force this game into one more end. I'll update there of the game on Sheet B. Looks like probably an upset coming here as another steal of one in favor of Mary McKett and Driscoll as it, they will take a 7-3 yeah, yeah, lead there into the final end against Marianne Arsenault, the former champion. So definitely not a match that people probably expected, but... I think It looks like we do have a final over on sheet E as it appears like Teresa Breen taking out the win over Jill Brothers, the defending champions. So down to two remaining games in play. Our game here and the game over on sheet B between Marianne Arsenault and Mary McKetton Driscoll, which appears like it will go the way McKetton Driscoll. So a bit of last minute drama here in, in this matchup. Okay, so uh, we've received the updates there as it will it is a eight to six final on sheet E in favor of Teresa Breen. It sounds like they did not complete the, no, the ninth end there. Uh, I do see the rocks at the far end. So trying to force us here to extend this game here. Jill Alco Holland. Second for team Mary Matatal. Weaver's working on this one, trying to, to get a little bit of a rub. We'll rub just a little bit, not enough to get behind the guard, though. So, a reminder, when we come to you on this sheet, there at 7 o'clock Atlantic time, like, Kaylee McLean will have the matchup here between Anson of the Lakeshore versus Jamie Murphy out of the Halifax Curling Club. So needing to to get one around the, the yards, put some pressure on with a, a well-placed draw. Jill Alco Holland with her second of two. Well, 
Sweeper's working on this one, Sonya and Cutcliffe. Trying to get to curl all, y all you've got. How far can you get it there to curl? Looks like it will in partially open. So final stone of the tenth end for Sheena Moore. Hit and roll over to the side, so sitting in count of three right now is Team Jones. So on the third stones here, Mark Cutcliffe. Sweeper just dusting it a little bit there. Needing it to come down. Will come down now. Where will it go? Well, can't do much better than that. The question is, will, will they be able to defend it? They'll need two for the, the win, one for a tie, sent, which would send it to an extra end. So third stones here, you, you will see Colleen Jones, the, the longtime representative of Nova Scotia and multi time Canadian champion. Sweeper's working on this one here. Bit of a miss there out of Colin. So they could open the door to a potential for a multiple point steal, and that would be in enough for the win. Cutcliffe working on this one. Here, this one. Alka Holland and Sonia trying to get it by. Will not. Question is where will it jam? It will open up the path toward Shotstone. So down to th this stone here of Colleen Jones plus the two stones each bond to the four stone throwers. That's all we have left in regulation play. Opportunity to correct on, on that as, as we will see. A final over on sheet B, it will be Mary McKetton Driscoll. Who, who picks up a big win over Mary Ann Arsenault 
appears to be make the final seven to three. As curling there, where will you get it? It will be shot stone. The question is now, how can you get to it? And it looks like they're looking at the possibility of that double. They're also looking at the possibility of almost playing the exact same shot there that saw Colleen Jones play on her last. So Colleen Pinkney trying to save game like she's done so many times before. Looking to play the yeah, little bit of an overdraw, try to come to rest at the nose of, of the Shotstone belonging to team Colleen Jones. Working on it a bit too much, if I, if I say so myself. You gotta jams, it will still be Shotstone belonging to team Jones. So once again, we'd like to quickly thank our title sponsors, Deloitte, Scotty's, our awesome crew of volunteers from the Dartmouth Curling Club, and of course the awesome crew behind the scenes at 360 Live who helped us put this on. <coughs> Always great to have excited curling to bring to you, the viewer at home. As we see, timeout has been called. <coughs> Kim Kelly sing singing the timeout. There. It's one of those in interesting situations here because you really you need to force a Colleen into the harder shot like like Colleen Pinkney into the harder shot right now it's looking like there is a pretty good double opportunity using the stone by the et, t just about the T line on on the eight foot and the, the stone currently saying shot stone. You need to find a way there that, that if you're going to force a shot out of Mary Matatal, like Mary Matatal's rank there, we're calling him Pinkney, throwing the stone, the, the forest stone, that it would, would be the harder of the two shots. Looks like they've made a decision here. This will be a very game changer moment in this matchup. <laughs> First of two here, Kim Kelly. Trying to prevent this game from going much longer. Sweeper's working on this one, trying to deal with it as best they can. Wheel jam, where will it go? It will still be one in favor of, of Team Jones.
It looks like they may be almost conceding the fact that they can't really easily save themselves a, a two that they would need for the win. So, possibility of trying to push this game to an extra end. Final stone here without the last rock. Colleen Pinkney for Team Matatal. Sweepers watching this, waiting for it to come down. Sonia trying to get everything you got. How will you get it? There looks like they're calling one blue, and it will be the final. It will be a nine to seven win in favor of Colleen Jones of the Mayflower over Mary Matatal. Yeah, like the Mary Matatal rank. Great game from both teams. A few key steals making the game pretty tight right down to the end. So, when we come to you at 7 o'clock Atlantic time, it will be Andrew Gibson out of the Lakeshore versus yeah, the Halifax Curling Club. Kaylee McLean will have the call for you on that one. So, till we talk to you again on behalf of our awesome...